Yes, sure. Thank you very much for joining us in this uh, virtual meeting that is hosted by the Podiatry Association of India. It's a great honor for us to, to be here joining you guys to have this session together. Uh, we are going to have a session about the product that we are going to talk about from myself. Then we have three very esteemed uh, clinicians who are going to share with you their experiences and I will introduce them to you as soon as we are ready to, to give them the control of the webinar itself. Uh, one, one thing that, uh, that I would like to urge you is that if you, if you see the chat button at the bottom. If you have any questions, please do write them there and we will try to have uh, an, an open Q&A at the end where our esteemed clinicians will be able to answer you uh, about the, uh, the queries that you might have. So I will start sharing my screen. I hope that you can see my screen okay. So as I said, I we're gonna start off. I'm not gonna take too too long. I would like to leave as much time possible to, to our esteemed speakers. Uh, we've got just to introduce to you this, this dressing that has been launched in India for the benefit of your patients and see how it can be beneficial for patients in your clinics. So when we are looking at wounds, usually these chronic wounds, they, they're never clean or they are potential for infection. The microenvironment of the wound is very adept to microbial proliferation and biofilm formation. If we look at, at, at recent evidence, we see that many clinicians are now saying that biofilm will be, present, will be present in almost all, if not all, our chronic wounds. And this is the vicious cycle that we see in front of us all the time. We have these planktonic bacteria that, that start generating together these biofilms covered very nicely in that EPS, which doesn't allow anything to go through to them. The slough and other debris together with the biofilm will stimulate the increased exudate. And therefore we need something to treat the biofilm, but also to clean up the wound so that we are having the continuous effect of, of cleaning the wound. As we said, these biofilms are, are a colony of different microorganisms where they are protected by the EPS and therefore limitation of the antimicrobial action will be there because the antimicrobial will not be able to penetrate there. So we need to find a solution how to use continuously the, the EPS to not allow the biofilm to come through. And the big problem with biofilms as our speakers will also introduce to you is that EPS formation is very quick so therefore, it's a problem. If we do manual debridement only, and we do the dressing within a couple of days that the EPS will still have formed again, we still have that mature biofilm even after just two days. So what can we do? Definitely, we have to remove the biofilm by means of a mechanical action, but we need to find something which is continuously cleaning and not allowing the EPS to come back. Once the EPS removed, obviously we need a, a good antimicrobial that will kill the bacteria. Keeping the wound clean is the most important to us in order not to allow that biofilm to uh, reform. One of the things that we always talk about when we're talking about wounds is how much exudate and what are we going to do to control that exudate. And the operative word there is control, not contain because there are a lot of, of, of dressings which will contain the exudate, but it's like having a leak in the roof. If you just paint over it, the leak will come again. We have to find the source of the leak. And in our wounds, the source is the dirt the environment in the wound and the biofilm formation. Once we remove that, the exudate itself will start to be removed and we will have autom autonomic regulation of this exudate. 
So what are the claims? And anything we claim in Urgo, we have to uh, give evidence, and I will give you a little brief evidence about it, where we know that these, this dressing, because of the combination of two types of presentation in the dressing, will give you the antimicrobial, but will also give you that cleaning action. So the antimicrobial is, is provided to us by the, by the silver, which is present in the TLC material. TLC is technology lipidocolloid, which is uh, a product which has been established by Urgo since the year 2000, which jellifies slightly on, on, on the wound bed and that allows that silver sulfate to penetrate inside the wound bed to start killing those microorganisms. There have been uh, quite a few studies on Urgotul AG to show us that the AG is a uh, broad spectrum and high effective antimicrobial. And this is uh, uh, just showing you uh, the in vitro studies where it has shown that it is very fast and very broad spectrum. However, the important part of the dressing, the next important part of the dressing is the polyacrylate fibers. These polyacrylate fibers, they absorb the exudate and, and the image there over as a magnet, it's not just for marketing purposes. It is really exactly what happens inside the wound bed. And we will see it in some of the cases shown that there is a, a, a positive and negative that is created between the fibers and the slough, and therefore the slough attaches itself to the dressing. So when you remove it from the wound, the slough is already attached there and it is atraumatic for the wound and obviously atraumatic for the patient. And it is because of these fibers that at EPS attaches itself to the fibers and cannot come back again. So it is nice to have in vitro results, but it is always nice to, to, to see how it works on patients. And this was a, a, an RCT that was, that was done in Europe and published on the Journal of Wound Care. And this is exactly what I was talking about, where you see that this slough attaches itself to the dressing. So when you're removing the dressing, you are literally removing the slough, the debris, and that EPS. And over here is uh, showing to you in a graph way that the reduction, 75% reduction of the heavy exudate. So it is not important how much we wick up. It is important how much we reduce that exudate because of that cleaning action that is being done. So again, as we said, the biofilm action is very important. The reduction of the biofilm population has been shown in in vitro study, which is also blocking the biofilm reformation for up to seven days. And these again are some in vitro studies that were published. This one was published in the Journal of Wound Care, where it shows the mechanical effect, the gentle mechanical effect, which will not hurt the patient or hurt the wound, where we see that there is a, a, almost a complete cleaning within 24 hours of the urgo clean in contact with the wound bed, reducing that biofilm volume and disrupting the integrity of the biofilm, which is very important so the antimicrobial can go in. Um, there was a comparison that was done with, a, with a, a, another dressing to, to show the efficacy and, and it showed that when we compared it to this modality, which is a hydrofiber AG plus extra that works with a chemical called ETTA, we're showing that the, uh, the Urgo Clean AG, the, the results were a lot superior than, than the other modality. RCTs are good, in vitro studies are good, but what is very important is 
how does it work in real life? And we have just seen this publication uh, just a few months ago that came from Dismond et al. from Germany, where they trialed it in an observational study of 2,270 patients. So they wanted to see if it really works in real life condition, being an observational study, they didn't change anything, they just introduced uh, the, the dressing in their standard of care. And because it was in 81 centers, obviously the centers might vary. However, the results were quite similar to all of them where it is showing the efficacy of the dressing. So, so just a few results from this study. I don't want to take as much time from you as possible. As I said before, the reduction of the number of infected wounds, the reduction of the clinical signs and symptoms just after two weeks. Many of these wounds were long-standing wounds. And having seen these, these uh, change in the wounds, we have to remember that it's not just working on giving us better results in the wounds. The patients themselves seeing their wounds getting better will improve their health-related quality of life. It's very interesting, the reduction of the exudate level here shown in the reality of clinics literally mimics the results of the randomized control trial that was previously done. And here showing now that we are pushing the wound towards the healing trajectory, the TLC healing matrix, which is part of the dressing it itself, has been shown for fibroblast proliferation. So we're cleaning the wound, making sure it doesn't get infected, reducing the exudate, but also pushing the wound to start healing and getting it closed as quickly as possible. And over here, uh, just, just showing the slides that most of the wounds, the huge majority of the wounds were healed or greatly improved. As we said, there's a lot of evidence behind what we do. There are different studies, anywhere from randomized control studies to case series. We will see actually sub cases today. Uh, one of the important things for us in Uruguay, as I said, is that we have to back what we say with science. And if you have any queries about our scientific presentations, uh, either today or even through email, we will be more than happy to discuss them with you. So basically we're here, we're just saying that, that Urgoclean is the only silver dressing that will help you be effective on the cleaning and removing that biofilm, thus reducing the exudate and moving your wounds towards that healing trajectory. Thank you very much. That was all uh, from, from my side. Now I have the, uh, the honor and definitely a privilege to... Uh, introduce the chairman of this session, Dr. A.P.S. Suri, who is a diabetic food surgeon from Delintley, currently the chief consultant and director at the Poya Dietary Services Diabetic Food Care Center in New Delhi. He's also the course director for the fellowships in diabetic food management. He completed his podiatry training from a very prestigious uh, Boston University, part of the Harvard Medical University of the USA. He's been a speaker many, many times, and we were sharing together before how many webinars he's been hosting in this new normal that we have now. And currently, he is the uh, member of the International Association and founder and president of the IPA. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Uh, IPS, over to you. Thank you so very much. Uh, th thank you, Emilio, for the uh, nice introduction. Thank you so much. And it was a nice presentation from your side. Uh, uh, I've been listening to your presentation before in uh, Sweden in EWMA conference. <coughs> I had a chance to listen to that. And congratulations to the whole team of uh, Urgo Medical uh, for uh, 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 this uh, launch of the Urgo Clean uh, AG which is a nice uh, dressing which we have seen, uh, I personally have seen in uh, my patients. And uh, I congratulate to the whole team uh, in India, Professor Salil Shah and uh, uh, Ms. Avasti and all the team over there. Uh, Sanjay and uh, Dr. Pawan has already given one presentation about a week back. Uh, I didn't have a chance to go through that because I just got busy in somewhere. So uh, would be having a chance after me to listen to them. So that uh, what I'll be sharing today uh, would be uh, some data on uh, 
chronic wounds, what is the data prevalent in chronic wounds. And further to that, we'll be sharing some cases on uh, Urdu clean AG, what I've seen, uh, I've done in my center and daily. So coming down to uh, the topic, uh, if you look at the neuropathic and neuro ischemic ulcers, this is a great catastrophe all over the world. This is the international data available and as it is in India also. If we look at the neuropathic ulcers and neuro ischemic ulcers, the mortality rate is something around 45% in neuropathic ulcers and 46% in, um, in neuro ischemic ulcers at five years. This is a five year mortality. And if we see all type of cancers running from prostate to melanoma, breast, urinary bladder, colon, all are below neuropathic and neuro ischemic ulcers. Only we are secondary to lung and pancreatic cancer. So this shows that this is something that these patients of diabetic, what we see in our day-to-day -day practices, when they land up into neuropathic ulcers and when they land up into neuro ischemic ulcers, it is part and parcel of the disease process. But what can we do for to decrease down their mortality? This is something that what we can do in a comprehensive wound management. When patient has landed up into an ulcer, what are the wound management techniques available to us so that we can enhance that or decrease the wound healing time for these patients and get them out of that the whole vicious cycle, what I'm going to show in some of the slides now. So if you look at the epidemic of diabetic foot disease, I think by the time we are speaking, everybody knows every 30 seconds, a lug is lost all over the world. 85% of these ulcers, they start from a simple foot ulceration. So simple foot ulcer is, should be the take home message after this webinar that how we can prevent or early heal these foot ulcers so that we can prevent these amputations. And a complete wound care uh, modalities are available to reduce this 85% of below knee amputations. So if we have to reduce uh, uh, amputations, what IPS stands for, I prevent amputation. And there are a lot of members from Indian Podiatry Association who are joined over here. And Sanjay and Pawan are already secretary and treasurer of Karnataka chapter of Indian Podiatry Association. We have Dr. Raka, uh, president from Chhattisgarh chapter and many other chapters are available. So I welcome you all uh, to this uh, webinar. So I think the all listening over here should be that how we can prevent amputation. So this is by comprehensive wound care modalities. So I need your attention over this slide. If we look at wound care, so either the patient comes with a chronic wound, it's a, either it's a venous ulcers or a diabetic foot ulcer, or it is uh, or any uh, or a carcinoma wound or a bed sore or a pressure ulcer. The first four weeks will tell us the time of our uh, prognosis of disease. So what it is that if our wounds at four weeks of time, if wound reduction is more than 50%, then there are 58% chances that our wound will heal in 12 weeks of time. Whereas if our wound healing is less than 50%, if the 50, less than 50% reduction area is there in first four weeks, then we have only 9% chances that our wound will heal in next 12 weeks of time. So initial four weeks is a particular time that that will tell us the prognosis of our disease. So this is a time where we can imbibe these new treatment modalities, whether it's VAC therapy or we are doing platelet rich plasma or whatever hyperbaric oxygen therapy or whatever type of things or newer dressings, which we are here today to know about this Urgo Silver AG. So newer dressings, if we can imbibe into our kitty for a wound care process, that's how we can in, uh, increase or we can decrease the wound surface area in initial four weeks of time. That is a time that we'll be able to save most of our patient to getting into amputations. So if we look at early intervention, that is very important. We know that we have to maintain adequate blood circulation. We need to have debridement. We need to take care of glucose and infection. We need to offload that therapy and we have to maintain moisture balance. As uh, Dr. Emilio was uh, talking about this uh, Urgo Silver Gene, that we have to maintain moisture on the wound healing. And maintaining moisture is the important thing in granulation tissue formation. If you look at characteristics of chronic wounds, these are most widespread medical problems worldwide. I think 3.7 or it would be more than in that America, in US, 6 million Indians, 4 million in Germany, they are suffering with chronic wounds. And if you look at this is presence of necrotic tissue, poor blood circulation, lack of granulation tissue and reopening of the wounds, which makes these wounds very difficult to heal. 
So it is really a catastrophe. I see patients who are coming to us with five years of ulcers, 20 years of ulcers. Recently, I saw a patient who had 32 years of a venous ulcer. So he has been shifting doctors, shifting hospitals, and that is what happens in chronic moves. So if we are able to imbibe new technologies in our practices, that's how we can early heal these wounds and have a good cost-effective measure for our patients. If you look at the microenvironment of a chronic wound, they always have elevated level of prothesis. That is the main catastrophe in these chronic wounds. They have very high level of prothesis, low level of growth factors, and bacterial bio. But then as you have seen, was talking about biofilm. So biofilm is really a catastrophe for these chronic wounds. And this all causes delayed wound healing. So we need to have a dressing to handle all these factors for our uh, wound healing processes. And that's how we will be talking um, in next two uh, presentations with uh, Sanjay and Pavan. So chronic wounds, we know that they are difficult to heal. We need to do debridement, offloading, infection, management, adequate perfusion, and dressing. So these all are very important in a wound bed preparation for these wounds. But here the concept of time or dime is there. Whenever we see a patient or a chronic wound, we need to think of tissue. How is our tissue? We need to do debridement for the tissue. We need to think about the infection, inflammation, sending cultures, and, for, and not to take care of the biofilms. And moisture balance is very important. What Urdu Cleans AG can show us that we need a dressing which can maintain moisture because a lot of time we are using a normal saline and use all and a lot of other things are there. But beta dyes are there, but these are all dry. Uh, they make the wound dry. So we need to maintain moisture balance and we have to take care of the edges. And that I think everyone listening to this webinar would be doing in their practices, but we need to remember all this time and buying concept. So biofilm, I think I won't, don't go into detail. These are all extracellular polymetric uh, substances which are embedded in the uh, wound bed and the deep wound bed structure. They are organized structures. And if you look at biofilm, they are 60% of the chronic wounds and 6% of the acute wounds. So acute wounds will not have much degree of biofilm as compared to the chronic wounds. And that is how these are difficult wounds to heal. And it is why this happens is it is mainly because of the quorum sensing. This quorum sensing is the main technology by which the biofilm, it matures and goes, keeps on debating into the wound bed and whole of the wound, wound surface area is embedded with this. So we need to have a dressing which can kill into this biofilm, destroy the biofilm or deconstruct the biofilm. And that is how we'll be able to have the, the good results about the wound bed preparation. So this is one case which has a venous ulcer. You can see over here, it has a lot of pigmentation over here and a lot of exudate was there, peri wound maceration was there. And we started to use this Urgo Clean and uh, every weekly along with the compression bandage. So we were uh, cleaning this with an U-Sol solution and later with an uh, superoxidized solution available at Microsyn, uh, which is easily available now. And we have done a big trial for this about eight to nine years back. And this was and with the compression bandage and every weekly we were changing this and applying Urgo Clean uh, sheet underneath without any gel and four layer compression bandage. And this was at about four weeks of time and the wound was able to close at about six weeks of time along with the compression bandage. So this showed that uh, the reduction in the surface area was there as compared with the initial, there was a big wound, lot of necrotic tissue and these are very painful and we need to curate it very slightly. It's very painful. These venous ulcers are very favorable. A lot of peri wound maceration is there. Peri wound fluid is over there. High level of proteases are there and we have to take care of the granulation tissue and addressing which can reduce the level of prothesis in most of these wounds. This was again another wound. This was again above the ankle. This was not a venous ulcer, but it was because of the patient was diabetic with neuropathy and he was riding a motorcycle and it was a burn injury by the silencer of the motorcycle. And but subsequently over the little meluli, it subsided anteriorly. We need to do the brightman. And every alternate day, we put him on a uh, Urgo Clean dressing. And this was at about two weeks of time. And then later on, at the end of third week, we grafted this wound and along with the compression bandage. And we were able to have a good result in this patient because there were a lot of exudate which was coming. And that was what we able to gain out of the granulation tissue with early debris. Initially, I was planning to put in a VAC, but lately the results were good. So I resisted with the VAC and continued with the dressing only. This was again uh, through uh, three toes were amput uh, toes. Uh, we had a discussion. We had CT angiography and had a balloon angiography with a stunt in the superficial femoral artery. 
uh, by our vascular surgeon. The brightment was done, antibiotics were given, and along with this, alter alternate day dressing with Urgo clean sheet was there. This was at about three weeks of time. And we grafted this wound at about eight weeks of time. And this was an outstation patient. He went to his city. And later on, when he came back, we grafted this wound. So that showed that uh, there's something what we are dealing with that it's helping us in granulation tissue, helping in this type of most distal of the wound which are very difficult because of the atherosclerosis. Even after vascular surgery, the perfusion in the distal vessel is very less because of the calcification and atherosclerosis in the most of the distal vessel. Already this patient and his ABI index when he came to us was about 0.8 and that's what we discussed with our vascular surgeon. And despite that, put four foot. But at the day one, I was planning to do a mid metatarsal amputation of the four foot in this case, but we were able to save this. This was again another patient. Uh, he again had a severe uh, necrosed uh, wound uh, on the under the first and second metatarsal heads, and then again uh, on the lateral arch. And we were uh, doing dressings with this. Subsequently, I didn't uh, catch hold of the uh, his dressing because one of my staff was having these uh, uh, subsequent photographs. But we were able to granulate this wound, and so later on we shifted this from Urgo Clean to collagen sheets with a foam sheet foam dressing because uh, we didn't plan to do it for grafting and the wound is epithelizing. He is still uh, wound is there, but about one inches or less than one inch, but we were able to granulate this wound and uh, uh, with proper offloading. So what we see that uh, Urgoclin, it deconstructs the bacterial biofilm. It destroys the bacteria. Wound bed defends our wound from recolonization. This is very important because something if we have a good dressing which can deconstruct the biofilm and help in preventing the recolonization of the wounds, that is what we need. Because other than all of the wound healing process from proliferation to inflammation and maturation phase, it goes away, goes subsequently what we want. But we have to maintain moist environment. And this sheet, it uh, helps us in maintaining moist wound healing and granulation tissue formation, as we have seen in most of antimicrobial activity because of the TLC silver uh, property of this sheet. So that helps in the antimicrobial activity. And I think it's a good thing. So I congratulate the team uh, to have this sheet in our country. And I think uh, most of the wound care specialists, either they are general surgeons, vascular, plastic surgeons, and di diabetic foot surgeons should be able to use this in our practices so that we can have a good results. So Indian Podiatry Association uh, stands for eye prevent amputation. That's what we have been talking and as I shared the initial slides that the process was what we doing that it is a learning process it is helping our patient and heal our patient if we follow all these three and this slogan has been given by morgan naidu from uh, uh, malaysia and we still uh, in uh, ip also we promote that that we need to learn new technologies we need to help our patient and that is how we'll be able to heal our patients and that we stand for us thank you so much Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Suri. This was a, a, an amazing presentation. Thank you for for the introduction, uh, highlighting the uh, what how difficult it is uh, for our patients with diabetic foot ulcers. Um, we have to make the patients understand that um, uh, what what all the clinicians. I I can always remember Dr. David Armstrong even from many, many, many years ago, talking to us about our patients, uh, not really healing, but being in remission because we see them again and again, unfortunately. So again, Dr. Suri, as chairman of this uh, webinar, thank you so very much for thank your you. great presentation. Thank you. I thank would you. like, thank you, you're more than welcome. Uh, I would like now to introduce, uh, I think we have become good friends now with uh, Dr. Pavan, who is a, a specialty consultant, ankle and foot surgeon at Karatkan Institute of Diabetology, uh, managing cases related to foot, such as deformity, corrections, neuropathic joint stabilization, tending transfers, and diabetic feet and orthopedic cases, including trauma. Um, he is currently the treasurer of IPA and has various academic achievements, which uh, if we had to share today, I think we would be here quite longer than we anticipate. Uh, he was awarded uh, Best Paper Awards in 2011 and 2012. And it's always a joy to hear Dr. Pavan uh, sharing with us uh, his experiences and his knowledge. So over to you. 
Thank you, Emilio. Thank you for those kind words. I hope all the people who have joined us today are safe wherever they are. Uh, because as we say, this is the new normal or the abnormal, as we can call it now. Uh, but yes, this is how we will be talking to each other for some time now. Uh, I am sure uh, we have a lot of people from IPA to join us today, uh, including uh, Dr. Suri sir, Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Raka. I welcome all of you once again. Uh, so as uh, the speakers before me have already spoken, I will not talk too much about what is the ideal diabetic food dressing. I mean, we know now, by now, that we are looking at something which is skin friendly, which does not cause menstruation, can absorb the exudate, uh, is antimicrobial and prevent biofilms. Biofilms, as you all know, is the biggest problem that we diabetic food surgeons are facing now. Uh, the new dressings should aid in epithelialization, should not damage the healthy granulation, should decrease the pain. Again, a very important aspect in arterial ulcers. And uh, yes, this was something which I wanted to put across to the uh, R&D team in uh, Urgo. Uh, can we think of smart dressings wherein uh, the dressing senses what the wound type is and it acts accordingly? Yes, this is what uh, Urgo's R&D team can start thinking upon. And last but not the least, easily available and cost effective. So we all know Emilio has very, very, in very distinct terms, he has put across what is the importance of an anti-biofilm therapy. Uh, and we have a lot and lot of literature now to tell us as to why this anti-biofilm therapy is very important in chronic wounds for us to get them on that, uh, on that uh, wave to, towards treatment. So this is my first patient, 48 year old, presenting with an infected right great toe wound after a pinprick, uh, poorly controlled diabetic, but a very educated patient who was open to ancillary treatments like HBOT. And uh, I think all of us can make out there the erythema, which is extending into the dorsum, right to the base of the second, third and fourth toes. Immediately uh, in the same debridement room, we had to give him uh, local anesthesia and try to debride as much as possible. But that was on the, the next day that the patient came to us with, we can already see the pregangrenous changes in the right great toe. So we had to take him to the uh, OT, do uh, an amputation and uh, excision of the metatarsal head. Now you see this wound here is pretty clean and I would want to uh, inform here that the patient did not have any peripheral arterial disease. And uh, just to decrease the pressures and the tension, we did not do a proper suturing. We wanted the wound to settle down, the erythema to settle down. So just simple stay sutures were applied. And that is how we get the patient on the next day. So uh, as you see, the dorsal flap was showing some necrosis, even uh, the flap, the plantar flap there. So. Uh, this juncture, we have still not started him on Urgo Clean AG, and we started him on uh, HBOT to see whether uh, we will be able to save as much of, as the dorsal flap as possible. And this is how the patient uh, comes uh, to me after three weeks of HBOT. And uh, this, these are the cr classic characteristics of a chronic wound. You can see the slimy structure there, uh, the exposed first metatarsal head, the second metatarsal phalangeal joint, there's a lot of peri-wound maceration, this being a uh, weight bearing, even though the patient was uh, trying to walk on his heel. So these are very uh, there in this wound. So we, there, you can also see the peri-wound maceration here. So in such patients, this is when we recruited him into the study. And uh, I have already told you about uh, the patient demography. Uh, wound details, uh, pain score, uh, the visual analog scale, according to visual analog scale, it was around four to eight, six with moderate exudate. Uh, so we started him on Urgo Clean AG. That's on day zero. And that is after the debridement. And, and that is what you see 18. So even though we still have uh, exposed metatarsal phalangeal joint, you can see the granulation, healthy granulation covering the first metatarsal head. So dressing was changed every three to four days. After three to four dressing changes, pain and exudate levels had decreased and the wound bed appeared healthy. 
the wound side had gradually reduced and uh, after six dressings changed the wound appeared healthy with granulation tissue and this is how uh, we follow up the wounds in our institute uh, we have something called as a wound measuring the wound size the wound bed exudates the pain score according to visual analog scale and frequency every 4 to 5 days patient used to come to us uh, the dressings as i said the cleansing agent that we used was simple normal saline although uh, we can also go ahead and use phmb solutions in this case and that was the progression of the wound so uh, this is not the end because the wound still had to heal so this was in this case the between a totally infected wound a damage control of the diabetic foot and the secondary procedures so the urgo clean ag in this case fits in between and it helps us in giving uh, giving a, a healthy bed for a surgeon to start doing the secondary procedures we did a simple filleting closed it and also did a simple skin grafting and that was how the wound looked after two weeks that's the third week the most important part is we were able to save the forefoot the part where the patient will start walking even though he will require uh, offloading footwear all the time but uh, it looks like a good foot for him to start bearing weight the secondary procedure so in this case as i am uh, as i was telling the urgo clean ag was not the primary treatment modality but it came in between to help us in taking the wound from a damage control diabetic foot to a foot wherein you can do secondary procedures this is case 2 a 43 year old uh, patient with a infected wound over the right lateral malleolus following excision of the infected lateral malleolus bursa which was done elsewhere this was a 3 month old score uh, again it was around 4 and the wound had moderate exudate with unhealthy granulation and slough which all of us can make out again we started him on simple cleaning with normal saline and urgo clean ag and that is how it looks on day 21 again the dressings were changed every 3 to 4 days now this patient was a uh, outpatient that means yeah, the patient was not from bangalore he had come to us from another city so we had to give him samples we had to talk to the doctor where he was getting because it did not involve any complicated procedures the doctor there was more than happy to help us with doing the dressings with urgo clean ag so in fact uh, by the end of uh, fourth dressing we told the patient that urgo clean ag was not required and a simple dressing has been started this patient now the wound has healed i am sorry i could not get the last image again we followed it up and as we can see everything improves gradually so to day 21 so as i told you after seven dressing changes with urgo clean pain and exudate levels had subsided and the wound bed appeared healthy with granulation tissue and in fact closure is almost imminent in the day 21 photograph now this was an interesting case this was a 72 year old male with a history of stabilized charcot foot with a lot of issues a uh, patient had a chronic kidney disease he had a peripheral arterial disease which was corrected and he had a chronic non healing midfoot wound because of uh, a stabilized charcot so again the patient uh, patient had a 4 month old infected trophic ulcer which was measuring around 10.2 cm square pain score was around 5 with moderate exudate and peri wound maceration the wound was initially being treated with uh, uh, epithelial derived growth factor in the and uh, was properly offloaded with a pneumatic cast and the biggest problem in such type of wounds are the recesses as you can make out this is these are these recesses can be a big headache for people who are manage and harbor your bacteria and biofilm uh, which can give rise to again recolonization or biofilm formation in as quickly as one day so uh, this was on day 7 when we started him on uh, urgo clean ag yes there was still a little bit of peri wound maceration as we can see 
but after six dressings the wound is completely cleaned again drastic reduction in the size of the wound which happens when the, the when the wound starts healing uh, and again nothing normal saline and urgoclean ag that was day zero and that is day 21 the patient is still being followed up and i'm sure the wound will heal because the underlying exostosis has been removed and patient is being offloaded but the most important part now we don't have any recesses to take care of there is proper epithelialization which is happening we have to just wait it out the last case again 46 year old this was a difficult case because he was a farmer by occupation came to us with a history of swelling over the lateral malus and a draining sinus with cellulitis so patient was taken up to the ot and uh, when we went wide ex uh, excision that we had to do and in the process of the excision some of these peroneal tendons were exposed now uh, this this case was basically taken up for urgoclean ag uh, to see whether the urgoclean ag helps in granulating such wounds wherein the tendons are exposed so this is day zero where we can clearly see the exposed peroneal tendons and this is day seven clearly we can make out that granulation has developed over the whole wound and this is day 11 again no recesses flaps firmly attached epithelial patient was not from bangalore so he had to be given uh, samples and sent home and this is after five weeks absolutely healed wound with no secondary procedures whatsoever so if you take care of a normal healing properly healthy wound you don't require secondary procedures at all conclusions urgoclean ag gives a very good option for wounds with slough and biofill not only that uh, in even in clean wounds with uh, wounds which have some amount of uh, uh, tendons which are exposed infection and biofilm are completely cleared does not allow biofilm to reform uh, there is good de-sloughing property which we are seeing with this urgoclean ag uh, there is definitely reduced level of exudates as emilio was saying since the dressing is taking care of the root cause the exudates decrease the wound surface areas it controls the peri wound maceration and thus helps in preventing secondary bacterial infections and uh, can be used with urgo tool ag and other urgo tool uh, 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 dressings that are coming out uh, as a complete range for the wound healing so we have to remember that urgo clean ag can be used in both chronically infected wounds and also in wounds in which we are seeing some amount of tendons which have been exposed and here i am not talking of tendons like the big tendo eclis wherein our plastic surgeon friends get involved but tendons when you have done or uh, done a uh, four foot amputation and in such cases definitely urgo clean ag plays its role in taking care of the wound and helping in granulation thank you thank you so much dr pavan for sharing your experience and and sharing these cases with us and uh, now we move on to our third speaker who is dr sanjay sharma who is also a podiatric surgeon with his uh, main field of work in the diabetic foot and wound management, dartosis and offloading. He is founder and medical director of Foot Secure and also advisory board member of, of various health tech startups and public companies. He's probably par currently the treasurer and joint secretary of the Telemedicine Society of India and joint secretary of IPA as well. So, Dr. Sanjay, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, this will be my pleasure talking about uh, the UrgoClean AG. Uh, we had a short uh, discussion uh, last week also. Uh, so, let me, uh, uh, Dr. Suri has kind of covered about the dressings. Emilio has covered about the biofilm and the, uh, how UrgoTol, uh, UrgoClean AG works. Uh, and Pavan also has run through the biofilm perspective. So, just let me just take a step back and run through um, what does... Sorry, what is um, so? 
primarily today we have more than about 3000 products uh, which uh, helps uh, in the globe uh, which says that they help whenever we are trying to select a wound dressing we today we have urgo clean ag we had multiple other dressings that has that has been there uh, and that will be coming in in future also so whenever we are trying to choose a dressing there has to be a certain characteristics of a wound dressing like to maintain a moist wound environment uh, maintain appropriate tissue temperature uh, which improves blood flow provide protection against a bacterial infection and uh, removes the slough around on allergic kind of a thing so i ideally any dressings that you choose uh, might fit into most of these uh, characteristics that are listed so how do you choose a a dressing for a diabetic foot ulcer so just think about it uh, whenever you see a wound whenever you clean a wound and other things when you are doing a dressing when you are about to choose a dressing what is what do you want the dressing to do should it rehydrate uh, the wound should it absorb the exudates like should it manage the uh, the moisture balance there should it deslough should it reduce bacterial contamination should it promote granulation uh, or should it promote the moisture or wound dry it so needs to be done you so every wound is not the same we all know that and at various stages of the of the wound we might have to use different kind of dressings especially in the diabetic foot ulcers so when we look at this and see what is what is it that we need to do and um, if it is wet we need to absorb the exudates if it is dry we need to rehydrate uh, the wound bed if there is a cavity then we need to fill the cavity if there is necrosis or uh, the slough we need to remove it if it is an healthy tissue uh, we will have to uh, protect the healthy tissue so this is what we need to do while we are choosing a dressing pr primarily so and there are various uh factors that influences the selection of the dressing uh which would be local site related factors as we discussed what is the wound type is it is it ischemic is it neuro what is the tissue type what is the stage of healing is there exudate no no exudate is there neuropathy is there edema is there pain so these are all the things that we need to look at at the local site when we are choosing the choosing the dressing and also we'll have to look at the product related factors what what is the product the quality of the product or the features of the product does it has a confirmable confirmability for the wound is it has a moss or the volume uh, is does it have the fluid handling properties antimicrobial pact properties or does it remove the slough does it remove the biofilm so these are the things that we need to look at from the product perspective and finally the patient related factors and finally but not but the most important is the skin fragile or it is easily damaged then we might not be able to stick some things which has an adhesive properties um, are there any known sensitivities uh, for of the patient uh, does it have the mobility and dexterity of the patient the hygiene needs uh, the compliance and last but not the least even the pricing or we are choosing the dressing of for the diabetic foot also so if we looked at all that and it is pretty uh, gets interesting when we have when we can have a single dressing which can uh, do multiple things single dressing as i said um, uh, the wurgo clean ag that we are talking about that i have used in a couple of my patients and i have been using it also so we all know that the locally infected wounds contain bacteria slough exudate biofilm necrotic tissue all these things are something that are there early on uh, when we uh, start uh, doing any of the dressings of the debridement and the presence of these materials would would have an ideal environment for uh, bacterial proliferation and biofilm formation and uh, also act as a barrier for any antimicrobial or antibiofilm uh, action that we do on that so it is very important so that the biofilms and the slough is kind of removed from the wound bed and also uh, have an antimicrobial activity so effectively fighting against the local infection 
infection uh, requires a combined antimicrobial and cleaning action. That is, that would be an ideal, and that is what the UrgoClean uh, AG brings in uh, to the platform in terms of where we can put both uh, the antimicrobial activities and the uh, the, uh, the anti-sloughing or the cleansing activity in a, like in a single dressing. So the silver polyabsorbent uh, dressing, that is what is the UrgoClean AG is, helps in reducing the bacterial cells concentration by removing all the materials like the slough, biofilm, exudate, et cetera, from the uh, region. It also facilitates uh, the antimicrobial action because of the uh, silver that is being there. And it reduces the local risk of in infection. And also uh, it is when we apply it and when we are, re when we are removing it, it is pretty pain-free for the patient. Uh, so the combined action of uh, to fight the local infection uh, and the complete cleaning is what uh, we have seen uh, in the Urgo Clean AG, uh, that in the, like in the cases that we can see further. So this was the first case that uh, we tried uh, Urgo Clean AG on. Uh, first, uh, I had uh, it was uh, tried by Dr. Pawan initially in his uh, hospital and the next set of uh, trials uh, uh, we did at Food Secure. And this was the patient, uh, a 65 year old woman who had uh, diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis and uh, and hypertension, uh, but this was not a neuropathic ulcer per se. So she had an excruciating pain uh, in this ulcer. There was actually an abscess there, which uh, had been drained out uh, locally in one of uh, one of the surgeons uh, about uh, two, uh, 70, 70 to 80 kilometers from Bangalore uh, uh, had been drained out. And this was a uh, looking wound when they uh, when they came to me it was uh, infected there is there was prurient discharge and the pain score was pretty severe so after uh, cleansing the wound thoroughly uh, debriding it and other things we uh, uh, you know washed it with the phmb solutions and then uh, started uh, urgo clean ag uh, putting it on the on the Urgo, uh, Urgo Clean AG. After about three, four dressings changes, uh, the pain in the exudate levels have been decreased and the wound bed started appearing uh, healthy. Uh, the wound size gradually reduced and uh, about <laughs> seven dressing changes, uh, we could see this kind of a wound that has been that has been there. So I, uh, there's a new image also, which is, uh, which wherein, wherein this almost has been closed. I wasn't able to update this presentation from the last one week. Uh, so, but but now the the wound has been uh, almost like ninety nine percent closed. There are some uh, open areas uh, of the skin that that we can see uh, there in the wound. Uh, this is just a, a graph which says that how uh, what was the size of the wound uh, when we started off, and uh, what is the size on the day twenty fifth, and uh, pro probably on day. Uh, 30, uh, we have seen a complete uh, grand, uh, you know, closure except for about uh, that. So that's uh, on the case one. This case two uh, was an interesting case. Again, um, there was a male patient with a history of diabetes who came in uh, post amputated infected wound of the second and third digits along with the tunneling. Uh, this uh, was there was a bone exposed and the pain score was mild uh, and there was huge exudates that we could see and there was callus uh, in the peri wound area on the plantar aspect of the foot and the, you can see there was a macerated skin in the in the peri wound area we cleaned the whole uh, debrided cleaned started a form started on uh, internal uh, IV antibiotics and started uh, Urgo Clean AG. And you can see the, uh, the way we, because it was a cavity wound, we couldn't um, just put the Urgo Clean AG uh, over, the, over it as a cover. So we had to cut it spirally, uh, the Urgo Clean AG thing, and then inserted it in, into, the, into the cavity. So this is what we did for multiple uh, times. Um, and uh, we could see from day 11 and day 30, we could see a complete, uh, closure uh, of the wound, even though there is a certain amount of maceration uh, that we see on the closed area, but uh, the wound is uh, pretty healthy and it has been closed. Uh, this is how we uh, could uh, tabulate the uh, the wound where the exudates was mild, mild and mil, and we did started off with an alternative day dressings and then uh, cover it till the weekly ones kind of a thing. 
this was the case too uh, after seven, like in day 30 it was kind of completely closed uh, case 3 again this was uh, one more unique uh, case that we that we took in uh, so there was ulcers on every digit except for the hallux uh, every other digit uh, of the right foot of this patient had an ulcer and also here also there was uh, tendons that was exposed and the bone that was uh, that was exposed and um, this was again uh, there was came in uh, with the prolonged discharge uh, and uh, and the sloughing and other things and then we started uh, dressing sorry debriding and started dressing with the urgo clean ag and this is how we started uh, dressing it cut the urgo clean ag and then started wrapping around the digits uh, every digits per se and um, we healing uh, this way where we can see on the day 38 there is this complete healing of the wound across all the digits and we um, this was completely managed by urgo clean ag itself we did uh, every time he came we did a dressing or cleansing with the phmb solution uh, and then dressed it with uh, urgo clean ag so from the beginning of uh, since the time he came in apart from debridement and using a phmb solution for cleansing and irrigating uh, we didn't use any other dressings per se not even the secondary secondary dressings sorry uh, this was the summary of it um, after the wound bed has been improving and we see a complete healed wound using uh, the urgo clean ag the last case uh, the uh, with the infected uh, hallux and uh, we had to uh, amputate it uh, considering the osteomyelitic condition uh, of the uh, uh, the distal and the proximal phalanx. Uh, this was the, just the post-op day and uh, day three. So we started uh, UrgoClean AG uh, after about uh, three to four days. Um, uh, the first one week was managed by Kedaxomer uh, ointments uh, and uh, and uh, foam dressings. And after uh, the extrudates was significantly reduced, we started on uh, UrgoClean AG and uh, we irrigated with the, uh, as as a protocol that we have in food, in food secure, we usually irrigate most of the wounds with the, any kind of dressings. So we started applying the Urgo Clean AG uh, every alternate day and we moved it on to every fourth day and we moved it on to every week. And uh, this is what we could see on the uh, day 23 and uh, the wound is uh, completely uh, healed now after uh, in, by day 30. So this is how uh, the tabulation went. It started from about five square centimeters to uh, one square centimeter uh, skin deep wound. And uh, this is uh, on the day 35. Uh, this is how we could see the complete, uh, we can see the wound is almost, almost closed, closed and probably another uh, week or so this will, will be closed. Um, so uh, across all the four cases, what I could see uh, when we have been uh, using uh, the UrgoClean uh, AG is the the sloughing is almost clear. The cleansing part of it uh, is is works pretty well. Uh, so even the exudate management, even though this is not, we can apply a secondary foam dressing over the UrgoClean and other things. But if it is a mild uh, 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 this uh, urgo clean uh, ag uh, can can manage it uh, so we can see the maceration around the peri wound area and other things reduced um, uh, with the urgo clean ag itself and um, see usually um, biofilm had been an issue uh, in most of these uh, chronic wounds and i didn't see when there was a regular uh, cleaning with the phmb solution whenever they come in and the urgo clean ag wrapped around the ulcers uh, i didn't see uh, major of uh, the biofilm formation uh, on the wound bed itself. Uh, it, this improved, surely this improved the healing rates uh, and reduced the wound surface area compared to any other standard uh, care of dressings that has been uh, av available. So this is just a brief about the four cases and uh, how do I choose the dressing for my patients. If there are any questions, happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, for, uh, Dr. Sanjay, for sharing your experience. What I found interesting is how you managed to actually uh, 
just change the dressing once every week when the wound was getting better. Uh, saves our patients a lot of worry that they have to travel to the clinics. We know, especially nowadays, how worrisome that would be for the patients and his family. Um, thank you very much for all, for all the speakers. Uh, the the thing is that previously, even the, even with the IWGDF, we used to we used to say that it's more important what we take off rather than what we put on. Talking about the offloading, talking about uh, the removing of any callus, and it wasn't very important to think about what we put on. Uh, but even through the IWGTF, now we see the importance that addressing can be part of a standard of care to be a uh, total uh, management of the patient. And talking about standard of care, we had a, I had a very uh, interesting question by uh, Dr. Sanjay Wopal, who, who wanted you to share from your experiences uh, about the offloading. What, what would you suggest uh, for offloading uh, of the diabetic foot, which we know is very important as part of the standard of care. This is for? Uh, Dr. Uh, Sanjay Bupal. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay, for you. That, for me, okay. I was thinking Dr. Sanjay Kala had asked the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, uh, is also here. Yeah, Welcome offloading to is the key uh, for any of the diabetic foot ulcers. So uh, the gold standards have been the total contact cast, but that is not possible in my clinics uh, for, for pretty sure. People wouldn't, uh, you know, accept it. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, you know, the soft, the, the first primary thing that we do is uh, uh, if it is a, if it is a neuropathic ulcer uh, on the weight bearing, probably for the first couple of days, uh, we uh, have him up on a complete rest uh, and uh, we get on to uh, an offloading footwear, which uh, are a soft pads to, to begin with. There are, there, there are soft pads that have been available. So we cut it all across the uh, wound area, put it onto the bandage itself. Uh, before getting onto the footwear part of it, so that the uh, the ulcer is offloaded at the at the level of the dressing itself, and after the we put the UrgoClean AG and take a couple of rolls uh, of the ro of the roller bandage, put the soft pads over it, and then then for sure it is the offloading that we do in the footwear's perspective. I, I usually use the peg assist modules that have been available uh, with Osser and Darko and uh, many other uh, shoemakers where there are insoles with, with the peg assist where we remove uh, various pegs that have been there from the ulcer area and put it rather than uh, making a hole uh, or a punch out in the uh, footwear itself. Because um, I believe from the, uh, from the, uh, from the people that have been seeing, if you punch it out from the footwear, um, it will cause a high pressure area in the surrounding areas of the ulcer and the peri wound area gets uh, high pressure and there is another ulcer uh, forming there. So uh, usually uh, a soft pad offloading uh, with a peg assist is something that I would uh, usually uh, do uh, for, for the offloading of the ulcers. Thank you very much, Dr. Sanjay. There is a question from... Always, please excuse my pronunciation. Uh, he's talking about uh, use of, of uh, the modality in venous ulcers. Uh, from my side, as you saw in those observational studies and RCTs, they come from Europe and the predominant wounds there are venous leg ulcers. So definitely uh, there's a lot of cases in, uh, in Europe. Uh, however, from your side, uh, dear panelists, uh, can you share uh, about can, what do I you think take, about that? Yeah, I can take this question in venous ulcers. I've tried in about three to four patients. And uh, this is a good sheet where you can apply with the compression bandage. Because in compression bandage, if you are applying in a venous ulcer, that is very important to reduce the edema, increase the venous uh, uh, reflux, to decrease the venous hypertension, and uh, the wound heals, tries to heal. So you have to apply compression therapy. 
if you are applying four layer compression therapy you need something underlying on the wound for about 6 to 7 days of time because compression therapy is to be applied for at least a weeks time then only the results come in and every weekly you have to change it sometimes you have to go to about 6 to 8 weeks or sometime like 10 weeks by the time the wound surface area slowly and slowly it reduces so this is a good sheet which you can apply that on the wound and leave it over there and then over that you can apply four layer compression bandage as sanjay has shown that he will be using four uh, uh, seven uh, leaving it for about seven days so you can leave it for about five to seven days of time in most of my diabetic ward what i have showed you i was doing alternate day dressing in most of these patient who were coming to the center but in venous disease with compression you can leave it for about something around 5 to 6 days or 7 days of time so it's a good dressing for that when we usually open that dressing lot of uh, we see uh, it has got a very strong hygroscopic action all the sheet is filled up with the discharge and the peri wound area is safe we have to uh, rely mainly on the peri wound area because lateral spread of the tissue uh, fluid should not be there because it will cause maceration of the tissue so i i hope it is a it is a good dressing to be used on the venous ulcers thank you oh, i can add, add on to point on offloading uh, for the doctors of indian podiatry association and other uh, foot surgeons over here uh, for bigger wounds like smaller wounds uh, what sanjay has uh, showed the sheets and these gels we also use very frequently at our center for bigger wounds and mainly patients are sometime in the hospital but when you have to discharge them they are going to the hospital uh, home they have to walk they have to uh, for day to day activities they have to go to bathroom and other activities in the house for that it's a better to apply a scotch guard pop cast when you apply a pop cast it offloads the pressure it's as equivalent to tcc but we cannot apply tcc if dressing is going on so it should be in the process in most of our patients we apply posterior slab with a scotch guard running from the metatarsus about 6 inches above the Achilles tendon on the posterior part of the lower leg with that your patient is doing the day to day activities in house they can come for the dressings the staff can take off the that uh, uh, pop slab can be removed dressing can be done and again the pop slab can be put inside so at least your wound is uh, safe even after with the application of wax you can apply pop cast and then the patients can be mobile in house so limited mobility because see, you have to plan something for something wrong 12 weeks for the time you can't make the patient lie down in the bed or on wheelchair or with crutches for 12 weeks to 14 weeks of time you have to plan something that he is able to be mobile in his house so pop cast i think would be a better choice offloading shoes front offloading heel offloading but lot of balance issues are there sometimes uh, i've seen patients wearing the shoe in the one foot only on the other foot they have then uh, uh, balance issues so we have to take care because they have neuropathies they have insensate foot uh, going down on in the stairs to perceive the distance the stairs they have to take with these offloader shoes and all ear cast shoe yes they are a good techniques for uh, mainly for sharp cut ulcer or mid foot ulcer if you have afos or ear cast they are the gold standard because again a lot of edema is there and uh, 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 other ear issues like injuries on the back of the achilles tendon medial malleolus lateral malleolus uh, medial side of the first mtp joint lateral side of the fifth mtp joint so we have to take care of these issues for these patient so lot of offloading techniques are available it depends upon what practice you are what city you are what things you have in your town a simple poron layer or plastrozoot sheets are also available as sanjay said don't be in the process of cutting uh, cutouts in the shoes or sandals that is totally an ill ill practice we don't recommend that under ipa whenever we do workshops we don't recommend these practice of cutting in soles from the cobbler or uh, doing that but that will increase more pressure on this Thank you very much, Doctor Suri. So, uh, because of time, we, I would love if we stay here even for for another couple of hours. I, I will, I would love to hear your expertise. But unfortunately, um, I think people need to go on with their life. So, what I suggest is if Doctor Pavan and Doctor Sanjay can can give us their take home messages, and then the wrap up and and final message from the uh, chairperson of this 
meeting Dr. Suri. Thank you so very much, everybody, for attending and listening to our webinar. Dr. Pava? Yeah, thank you, Emilio. Uh, yeah, uh, see, there are uh, quite a few things that we have to talk about. One is uh, the Urgo Clean AG. Uh, ex expect that Urgo Clean AG will do wonders to the wound. Okay, we have to understand that it is not magic. It is it is a scientifically derived uh, uh, dressing material which does specific work in specific wounds. So if you are using it in uh, with particular indications. That is the time that it will show you the maximum results. You just cannot think that, okay, this is a, a dressing which can be used in all type of diabetic foot ulcers. No. The UrgoClean AG. UrgoClean AG, although can be used at different levels. By different levels, I mean, if a patient has come to you at your clinic for the first time with a chronic infected diabetic foot ulcers, Yes, you can use it there. You can also use it when you have already tried a lot of things like what I showed in my first case and you see that the wound is not improving. You can use it as an intermediate to get the wound ready for secondary procedure. So there also you can use these things and definitely in all the chronic wounds which are showing classical characteristics of uh, biofilm. And uh, as Sanjay will be speaking after me, uh, the applications, over to you, Sanjay. I mean. No, the applications, yeah. So first, as a take-home message, uh, there are different uh, dressings uh, that are available. You need to choose it, as uh, Dr. Pawan and Dr. Suri said, uh, rightly at the right stage. Say that every uh, one dressing is uh, for every condition of the wound or every stage of the wound. Uh, and uh, in terms of application, um, we can innovate. In terms of as a, as we said, it, it, if the wound dressing comes in as a square, we can surely innovate to make it make it round, make it uh, spiral, uh, make it as a, 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 a tube around. and various things. So uh, try and innovate uh, with the existing uh, dressings that you have and ensure that um, the policy, if there is a cavity fillet, if there is uh, uh, very high exudate, absorb it, if it is dry, moisten it, just think what does the wound need at that point of time and uh, apply the dressings appropriately uh, just to manage uh, the wound area and the wound surface locally. And do not ignore the the systemic conditions of the patient, the nutrition and other things, because that whatever you do with the dressings locally, uh, his systemic conditions uh, has to be taken care of also. Good. Uh, the only point uh, I want to mention here for the delegates is that, uh, <clears throat> as Pavan has said, it is nothing uh, gold standard in uh, diabetic wound here. We have to give a complete ischemic ulcer where there's no perfusion coming there's a lot of necrotic tissue and you have degraded that wound and you start applying urgo uh, urgo clean ag there will be no results for this sheep it's not that uh, you uh, later on you'll say oh this uh, this dressing has not worked for me so that's the thing it has to be a comprehensive wound management and choice of the patient it's not that urgo clean is not good but you will have a bad uh, impression about this sheep so you have to think of the per perfusion. You have to do ABI index in your patient. You have to see the perfusion. You have to get the cultures done. You have to see whether gram positive, gram negative, and anaerobic bacteria. You have to hit the bugs. And you need to offload that. Suppose Sanjay has shown a patient on the heel and you are applying Urgo, uh, AG, Urgo Green AG on the heel area and the patient is walking with the dressing with a normal footwear or normal sleepers. So I think you apply gold, you apply silver, you apply diamonds on so that, no wound will heal until and unless you offload that area. So you have, whenever you have to choose a dressing, it has to be a comprehensive wound management. You have to check perfusion, you have to check infection, you have to check offloading. These are the three main standards. Then, as Paman has said, when only Urgo Clean has a role in 
in chronic wounds don't affect in acute wounds because acute wounds you can do with other things also what are available by you or you are still practicing it's not that wounds are not being healed without urbo ag clean you know, there are a lot of things which we all are practicing here so it has a role in chronic wounds it has a role by biofilm irritated and difficult to heal wounds which are not getting healed by other methods there you can use this sheet and it will be successful along with other methods of this so this is my take home message for all of you but start applying that other thing to the team is data collection for this all over the country whoever is whether it's vascular surgeons or plastic surgeons or general surgeons or diabetic foot surgeons even <coughs> this is a good sheet even for physicians and diabetologists lot of diabetologists and physicians are there in the group so it is a very good thing when you are taking care of sugar you taking care of infections of loading debridement you can uh, very easily your staff or you can take care with this sheet and leave it for about 4 days 5 days of time so patient will be attached to you keep on coming but data collection serial photographs and your uh, mr shah is there uh, he can join us uh, open up your video and join us that you need to make your team to have a data collection then at the last like site january or february we can plan another meeting and there we can collect the data from say 100 hospitals or 50 hospitals in the country and then see how the results are going mainly for chronic wounds venous ulcers diabetic foot ulcers and even neuro ischemic ulcers when vascular surgeon has done the procedure and orthopedic surgeon when they have done the their procedures how are the results chronic ulcers neuro infective ulcers these are the big field in the country where you have to collect the data so thank you so much and uh, i congratulate the whole team of urgo for this uh, national launch and uh, i think one we have another very important is we whenever we are doing with wound care we have to see cost effectiveness for the patient because these patient they are undergoing vascular surgeries they are undergoing orthopedic surgeries diabetic foot surgeries they are taking insulin and other ohas antibiotics hospital admissions are very costly so diabetic foot care is a very costly field along with the renal uh, ckd and diabetic foot infections so whatever dressings we are choosing we have to choose cost effectiveness by choosing these type of dressings we can reduce the wound healing time suppose it takes 12 weeks you can reduce to about 7 to 8 weeks of time so that much period of time is saved for the patient so that's why data collection and along with cost effectiveness that is uh, i think uh, the uh, industry should see Uh, where doctors can use for their patients so i welcome you all and thank you for joining here and congratulate the whole team of urgo for the national launch and uh, over to you thank you so very much uh, dr suri for concluding this webinar uh, if there's uh, other questions we will be more than happy to receive them by email and we will forward them to the panelists uh, from my side uh, from urgo medical and from all my colleagues i want to thank you so much for taking care of our dear patients for doing you said you don't do magic i think you do magic uh, for all the magic you do with with our patients um may your hands be blessed and thank you as well and please be safe and have a nice end of the weekend before you go back for your daily battles thank you so much and thank you very much for all our attendees yeah thank you thank you dr suri and team thank you thank appreciate you. your time yeah thank you thank you